Hello everyone, my name is Lauren Bowling and this summer I worked virtually at NASA Langley with Dr. Chris Wool on the advanced structures and materials technology integration for a lunar habitat project. So basically this whole summer I just worked with inflatable habitat. So if you guys didn't know, we are going to the moon. Um, so the Artemis Space Camp has three main staple items. The first one being a habitable mobility platform which just supports long EVAs, a lunar terrain vehicle, and then a foundation surface habitat, which has a minimum requirement of being able to support four people for at least 28 days. NASA hopes to have this out by 2020, uh, but traditional metallic structures actually pose a lot of health issues and logistical issues during transportation. So um, we're looking at alternative structures and one of those are inflatables. Um, so inflatables are being investigated just because uh, during transportation, they have optimal mass to volume ratio. And then when they are deployed, uh, their large surface area helps disperse structural loads and heat. So my overarching project goal was to help identify active Langley research that can be used in an inflatable habitat. And there were three major milestones, developing a timeline for habitat transportation, producing a gap analysis for this needed technology, and then generating a habitat design. So I did this um, by doing an intensive literature study on everything inflatable habitats. I uh, interviewed a lot of research groups at Langley to learn about their technologies and the possible application. And then I compiled all these applicable technologies into the bowling habitat. Um, so uh, this whole summer, I worked alongside a graphic designer to help bring my ideas to life. And all of these uh, technology callouts are either active or past Langley technology. So this first image is just the habitat being unloaded from the lander. Um, and then in the second one, we have the deployable friction barrier, which is made out of a material that depends on its elastic energy to deploy. And so this is just going to protect the inflatable portions from lunar dust. Next, we have our Inflex fabric. So this was a uh, partnership between ILC Dover and NASA Langley to help develop an inflatable fabric that has human health sensors within it. Then we have the LEA airlock, which is the airlock uh, being uh, investigated for the Lunar Gateway, which is the ISS but for the moon. Um, and its design is a rigid, expandable structure with inflatable fabric around it. So this just needs to be expanded and pressurized, and there's an airlock. The reason I have it in quotation marks is because a lunar habitat is going to need a multi-chambered airlock just to incorporate more redundancies to mitigate lunar dust. And then a secondary support structure is going to be really important to have in an inflatable habitat just in case there is catastrophic failure. We need to protect the astronauts. So I have boron nitride nanotube guidelines as that secondary support structure because BNNT is significantly lighter but stronger than steel. And then the landing site is going to have a bunch of technologies on it as well. So the first one is Krusty, which is actually being developed by NASA Glenn. It's a kilowatt reactor using Stirling technology, so a nuclear reactor with a Stirling engine. Um, and this fits in really nice with the timeline because the Artemis timeline already has uh, plans to send a nuclear reactor to space. And then something that's going to be really important for this habitat is in situ resource utilization, which is using what we got on the surface of the moon to improve our habitat. And something that we're going to have a lot on on the surface of the moon is landers, because their main goal is just to deliver cargo or payloads. Um, so we're going to use technologies like the electron beam gun to kind of, you know, in situ resource utilize these landers. So an electron beam gun can cut and weld metal and so harvesting the metal parts of these landers and for this habitat I used it as floorboards. And then um, same thing with repurposable composites. Um, these won't be able to be reshaped so using them as basic furniture items like tables, chairs, stools or like support things. Um, that's what repurposable composites can be used for. And then there's a trussulator which is an additive manufacturing technology that was developed in partnership with uh, Tethers Unlimited and NASA Langley and basically can make super long trusses that are super strong. Um, so using these as floor joists to complement the floor board we got from the landers. So here's just a cross section of the interior. You can see the inflex layering scheme and something that uh, has not been included in the inflex layering scheme are habitat health sensors. So these will notify astronauts when large impacts occur or penetrations, so they can fix those in a timely manner. Um, and then we have lunar ceramic dust coating. Um, so this just goes on any rigid item to protect it against wear and tear of lunar dust. Now you can see the electron beam floorboards and the trussulator floor joists. So um, the bowling habitat is just a modern suggestion for the foundation surface habitat. It's just beneficial to demonstrate how the current inflatable habitat architecture can be improved with these emerging technologies. And it's also important to note that this habitat our architecture really only addresses the structural needs of the habitat. 
but we still need to address hardware, hard connection points, monitoring, extra radiation protection for solar photon events, lifestyle needs like cooking, cleaning, stuff like that. So of course, I want to say thank you to everyone that I worked with at NASA and of course the Michigan Space Grant. Um, and then all the subject matter experts that I interviewed throughout the course of my internship. So I want to say thank you for tuning in and enjoy the rest of the conference.